three between Ninjo Ob, who is on the verge of elimination. Going against Agistol, this is a two-player map. Honestly, if I was Ninjo Ob, I would get a scout in Agistol's base, like, now. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not even cheesing. Send out the SCV to keep eyes on that guy now. Because he's proven to be a wily and difficult opponent. These guys, so Goromund asking what MMR are these guys approximately. Ghost, so Chobo League has a he has the most variants, honestly. So Chobo League champion, I believe, two seasons ago was Machine, and Machine is currently actually in Gosu League with a bit of practice, and I think Machine was around 1800. I think this tends to be the like 1700 to 1800 range ish. Sometimes as high as 1900, but there are players that have been around the 2000 MMR mark that have inhabited Chobo League. I know Future was also a previous Chobo League champion. And he, at the time, was around, I think, 1900, 1850, as far as flat MMR, for those who are curious. Agistol doing that drone extractor trick, and I'm wondering if he's going to do the same thing in this match that he did last match. Some questions in chat. Why did Ninjoab go for that fast expansion? I will say this. I feel like a lot of times, maybe this is the mistake in the foreigner community. Maybe it's just, I don't know. You'll have to ask some higher level players than me, but I do feel like a lot of times players, rather than just trying to survive and make it, in, I feel like this is the inversion of Koreans, and I think that might be because Koreans just feel, particularly high level Koreans, and I think that might just be because high level Koreans feel more confident in their multitasking ability. By the way, we are seeing a 12 hatch this time. We're sorry, we're seeing an Overlord produce, but I think this, yeah, 12, I think that was 12 hatch this time for Magistol. Should pay more attention. First Marine Breen produced. This is, de yeah, this is 12 hatch. But I feel like a lot of players, what they'll do is, is they'll opt to be more economically greedy rather than just trying to survive and do the thing that will get them into the mid and late game. Spawning pool being placed after this. So looking more like a standard 12 hatch build from Agistol overall. Can't cheese every game. Or can't be, I guess, purely aggressive every game. Drone getting boxed out. Might end up losing its life. Ugh. Sneaks out. Nice micro on Agisil's part. These Marines need to be... Need to respect, honestly, this. They're trying to do an end-around ar maneuver to catch this drone. Shouldn't be able to do so. Drone is going to get back home. Scott free. Spawning pool. Finished. I'm wondering if this SCV is going to wander around try to get a quick kill, though. On that engagement point. Extractor up, three drones on gas. Here's the thing, Agistol thus far, I think three hatch play has been a little bit, I will say, I don't. I know what the previous meta was. The previous meta was take a quick third and try to go for more of that Lurker Hive Tech sort of deal. Ninja Ob now plopping down that command center, still does not have a bunker on the base. And that might, again, be disaster for him because this is six Zerglings being produced. Once again, they don't have speed this time. But without a bunker in place, that's going to be scary. Actually, he's got six Marines. Should be okay. Six Marines versus six Zerglings with a decent amount of micro. The Marines should be should should win. Ninjoab adjusting his build a little bit appropriately. And that's also going to allow Ninjoab to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more rap rapidly with that Marine Medic response. And I'm curious, once these Zerglings get there, if they're just going to suicide and sacrifice themselves... Get a spot. We actually are seeing two hatch play here, by the way. Two hatch layer. I think we're going to see mutas in this instance. Pulling that right-hand corner. These Zerglings need to get out of here. Instead, engaging. They're not even going to get a single Marine kill. Nice micro overall by Ninja Ob. And that command center should be up momentarily for him. But critically, very quick layer. And there's the Spire. I'm curious how Agistil's muta micro is. But also, this could be a quick win for Agistol because he's he's got a decent medic marine. He's got a decent marine force. He should be able to get medics out in not too long. And honestly, I think he might be halfway across this map. We'll see by the time these Milusks are up. And if you're just going straight to Hatch Muta, usually the sort of situation you want to be in is where you can be in your opponent's base and taking out SCVs and things like that. Second extractor planting it looks like a creep colony defensively, just in case there aren't any Zerglings or any vision here for Agistol. Starting to wander up with that Overlord in that corner. 
an academy just finishing, so should see the medics alongside. Ninjo Ab in a very comfortable position. I like that he's getting the cops at station sooner rather than later, considering his opponent. And we'll, we'll try to watch the scan here. I'm actually going to take Ninjo Ab's vision off for this scan momentarily. And there's the Marines. Still no... And Stim is being upgraded. The engineering bay, wherever it's being built, is just about finished. Critical moments right here. So let's wait for that first scan and see where it lands. Medic Marines moving their way across the map. Actually saving the scan. Interesting. Rather than using it for scouting information. There's the scan. Sees the Spire and sees the eggs building. There's also level 1 weapons being upgraded here for Agistol. We'll bring his vision back up. Two creep colonies on the front. Should be able to provide a nice defensive position. But with the Medic Marine threat nearby. Ninjo Ab should be somewhat safe. Is still going to have to engage... These mutilists heads up. This is six. Now it comes down to micro at this stage. Nice pick off on that corner. Agistol showing some good micro. Turret's just now coming online at the main and natural. And you can keep it a little bit thinner as far as that pure turret count. Because he does have Agistol on that corner. Good stim into that marine. Weakening one of these mutilisks. And this is going to be pure two hatch muta. And you can win this. Losing one muta right there, which is not a good start. You can win this with this sort of strategy, but your micro really needs to be on point. Agistol looking to pick off reinforcements. Able to catch several marines out of position. Critically not able to pick off any of those medics. Ninjo Ab also needs to be careful that he doesn't overstim here. And drain too much of that medic energy. And I think he feels he has drained enough of that energy that he's going to go ahead and pull the rest of these mutalists off and see what he can get done at the main. Turret there, protective over that barracks. Gonna be able to kill several units here and actually picking off, not yet picking off, but getting close, having a little bit of trouble microing this. Picks off one medic, able to get two, and that's actually a big win here. And slowing down that factory, and that's gonna send Ninjo Ab in retreat. And more mutals being produced, and critically, level one weapons is on the way, plus a Hydra Sten right there to perhaps have some Lurkers as a turnaround support in not too long. Ninja Ob's not out of this game yet. If you look at the pure economic numbers, he's got twice the base supply count. Two Mutalisks are very low, but this is another cadre of Mutalisks looking to group up, and they will have weapon ones, and that is when these turrets mean much, much less. Agistol is in a great position, honestly, at this stage of the match. Moving up with the drone, now that he feels he has map control, really good sense of this, too, to go ahead and take that 1 o'clock position. Mutalisks initially wandering in, not going to wait for their brethren. Might end up losing one as a result, but that's going to bait the rest of them down. And the rest of Mutalisks now grouping up. I honestly wish he had waited a split second right there. Factory's up, I assume, to help produce Goliaths. Provide something to deal with these mules. Another mule is taken out. Every mule counts here at this stage because this was a big investment. But picking off a lot of Marines on this back line. But you can see how, ooh, a lot of mismicroing there. And Agistol end up losing, loses two mules as a result of it. So he's down to seven, eight, nine, ten. Although they are not grouped up with. But this is going to keep Ninja Ob on the defensive. Two Terran starports plopping down. He wants to try to produce a very quick science vessel count. And once those science vessels are out there, that will help mitigate a lot of what Agistol can produce here in this mid-game. Again, diving in to a wall of Marines and losing another mutal grouping of Mutalisks. Agistol has Lurker Tech upgrading. Is actually upgrading Zergling speed. Some Zerglings wandering down, trying to take down those turrets while those Medic Marines are a bit pinned back. Agistol diving in, able to take another turret out, but he has taken too much damage, I think, on these Mutalisks. Lag can be a really big factor in this. Three Hydralisks being produced it's as well, and I want to, I don't just want to say, oh, Agistol, bad micro. First of all, it's hard to micro Mutalisks, but two, I'm wondering what the, the lag conditions were for him, giving him excuses. Lurker Tech has been upgraded. I think Agistol is going to move in. Knowing Agistol, I think he's going to move in for a quick Muta Lurker 
kind of combo attack all in on that natural expansion. He has almost a full control group. Well, he does have a full control group, effectively. Keep in mind, there's probably an Overlord in that grouping as well. And he has another Mutalisk that's charging up to kind of swap out. Atchison still looking for places. Here's the thing, though. Ninja Ob sitting at 44 SCVs to 16. If he can just weather the storm and take a third, he'll be in a great position and saturate that third. That'll be the other critical thing. And he's getting a lot. Here's the other thing. You get enough Medic Marines out there. They're just so efficient. And Valkyries being produced. I was expecting Science Vessels to mitigate this. Instead, opting for Valkyries. And this is going to be two Valkyries. I don't see any sort of... Scourge or anything to deal with this. Some Lurker is actually in a defensive position rather than an aggressive position. But with those Valkyries over here, had Ninja Ob can just start meandering out, honestly, and really pressure these bases. is still going to need to rely on some... Here's the thing, though, with those Lurkers on the high ground on those ramps. He's going to need some sort of detection to deal with this. Mutalisks now sweeping across towards the main, unopposed. But that's right as these Valkyries are going to be produced. So he... Oh, and these Mutalisks are pinned in. Oh, my goodness. Eating all sorts of splash damage. Melting those Mutalisks. Devastating. Two Mutalisks... Very low health managed to m migrate out. Constant scans able to push in to that 12 o'clock on the response from Ninja Wab. He's like, okay, you do not have Mutalisks. I'm just going to take out your third base. And a huge swing in events here. Medic Marines now holding the high ground. And I think they're going to be able to go ahead and take that hatchery out. A Lurker Egg morphing on the ramp to pin them in. Big swing. Now Ninja Ob, honestly, with those Valkyries, can start hunting Overlords. Ad is still in a lot of trouble now. And only a single Mutalisk to try to defend it. No Hydralisks on the ground. He was working towards Hive Tech, but two base Hive is not... Really need uh, gas to make that work. Valkyries being a little bit defensive. Like, did those Medic Marines? I think they just... Yeah, they took a lot of damage going across that Lurker. Speaking of Lurkers... I think this is kind of a Hail Mary from Agistal, moving five Lurkers towards this natural expansion. No bunkers here. So still potentially a game-winning maneuver, depending on how much comps has left. We do have one scan. That was... And no more energy left in that scan. And what about here? We got one more scan left. Mutalist very quickly wiped out from above. But I don't see any science vessels. Okay, finally some science vessels being produced. Okay, I think Ninja Wob has everything he needs, plus a Radiate, just in case, has everything he needs to finish this game out. Level 1 weapons has already been upgraded, level 2 on the way. Lurker's pushing this Medic Marine Force back. Agistel trying to get a bit of map control. And pushing in. I don't know that he has enough pure Medic Marine to, to deal with these Lurkers, actually, currently. Now shifting and positioning, engaging on top of it. Three Lurkers left. This counts more for, for Agistel than it does Ninja Wob. And that single Marine... Oh, is he going to pull out those medics and keep them alive? No. They're getting wiped out as well. Zerglings starting to flood their way across. Zerglings cleaned up. Three Marines now versus these Lurkers. One Lurker left. And Agistel just, I think, looks like some medics pushing their way back towards the main. Marines trying to cut off reinforcements as they're flooding out. Valkyries... While all that was happening, taking out, I assume, Overlords, going Overlord hunting, Ad is still in a lot of trouble. He's at <laughs> 28 supply, comparatively. So like I was saying, it's, this is kind of what I want to say, as threatening as that attack looked, really, it was up to Agistol to break and, and get through and finish things. Oh, man, these Marines are getting a little bit mismicroed, and Zerglings getting more kills than they should here. Ultralis Cavern up. Ninjo... Or, sorry, Agistol does have... Some units, but I think it's just going to be too little too late. And a single Ultralisk is two Ultralisks, I don't think is going to be sufficient. Especially with the Radiate online. So all Ninja Ob has to do is keep macroing and survive. And I think he will take this match. And honestly, just let these Valkyries go do their job. Agistol now in the red. Two base, yeah, not something you see every day. Two base Ultralisk. 
I think this is the only Overlord left in the air. Maybe I'm missing one someplace. There's another Overlord. Small Medic Marine grouping. These Zerglings flooding their way across. This is all in now for Agistol. The Ultralisks making their way across, engaging this Medic Marine force outside their own base. The science vessels need to... The, the sooner the science vessels get up here and irradiate the Ultralisks, the better. This Medic Marine army getting wiped out. Fire bats on the ground just in case there's some Dark Swarm. Level 1 weapons has been upgraded. Level 2 weapons and armor will be there. And now the science vessels are in position, irradiating what's left of this Ultralisk army. And we'll see what happens with Agistol after this... Because honestly, I feel like this army is going to get cleaned up. Once this army is cleaned up, if he GG's from there. Radiated Ultralisk is actually exactly where they want to be on top of Medic Marine Line. Yeah, there's GG. Clever thoughts from Magistol. A little bit of uh, bad micro with those Mutalisks and not able to, cl to clear things out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks everybody for on the Twitch stream for tuning in. And thanks for listening.